Good morning. Welcome to Walking Boxing. Sunday, August 25th, 2024. And uh, a little bit cooler today. Not cold, but cooler. But it is very windy. So apologies if it's coming through the microphone. Uh, we've taken a little bit of a different route today. I'll sort of leave it up to Neil which way he goes. I've got about three or four different routes he might choose a daily, uh, on a daily basis. He might go left, he might go right, he might go up, he might go down. I'll sort of leave it to him until uh, the time comes where it's like, nah mate, we need to go. <laughs> we need to go this direction. And that's when the fun starts. Because that's when he digs his heels in and says, no, I want to go right. And I'm saying, well, that's great, but we need to go left or we'll end up two hours from home. So uh, yeah, he's just gone a different way. And it's all uphill, as you can probably tell by, by my breathing. So anyway, uh, on to a few bits and pieces in the news cycle at the moment. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the Canelo Alvarez, Terence Crawford situation. Now, I know this has sort of almost been put to bed, most, most importantly by Canelo himself. He said he's not interested in the uh, Terence Crawford fight. Uh, he's too small. Uh, he wants $100 million or $150 million, whatever it might be. And it's not on his agenda. But there's a couple of things that have just been, well, a couple of factors that have just sort of been sort of bubbling under the surface for just a little bit that makes me think that this still might not be as silly as it seems. Now, there's a couple of reasons. One is that Canelo has simply run out of people to fight. Uh, David Benavides has given up. He's gone up to light heavyweight. Uh, has his own issues at the moment, of course, because he's, he's, uh, he's been injured, although he has announced that he'll be back. Uh, David Morrell has given up as well. He's gone to 175 as well. And uh, so he is out of the picture for uh, the time being, as he goes on there. Hello. Um, so the, the, uh, he's obviously already dealt with most of the guys at 160. I know Caleb Plant's talking about maybe a possible rematch. I doubt that's going to happen. He was stopped by or knocked out by Canelo, so that's certainly not going to happen. But the, the, the only real name that's being sort of thrown about at the moment is Christian and Billy. Now, while that would be entertaining, he would come to fight, he'd let them go, got a little bit of appeal up in Canada, uh, being French-Canadian, um, which is a little bit limited. If you know the Canadian demographics, they're all, they are literally like two separate countries, uh, Quebec and uh, the rest of uh, Canada. So he might be very well known in Quebec and supported, not so much maybe throughout the rest of Canada. But anyway, that's, that's a different story. So while, well, as I said, he would be entertaining, he would provide great value. That's literally when you think about it, the only fighter outside Morel and Benavides that Canelo Alvarez is really sort of looking at. Then on the flip side, you now have Terence, well, Terence Crawford has said, look, I'm not really interested in the, well, it hasn't actually come out and said it, but it's, it's being, it's being, um, what would you call it? Uh, well, by his team and uh, uh, just little things that he says uh, through different sources that he's not really interested in fighting the boots Ennis of the world, not because he's, he's scared of him or whatever. It's just that he's at the point of his career where he just doesn't need, as I say, the smoke of fighting Jared uh, Boots Ennis. Then, and he's also at 147, by the way. Crawford is now at 154. Then you've got those young tigers, Tim Zhu, Virgil Ortiz, Sergei Bolchok. Uh, he's already dealt with Madrimov, of course, but these are the guys. Then, of course, you've got the established guys like Fandora, Spence, uh, Charlo, maybe. So I've just got the feeling he's not really, or he has, as I said, made insinuations is probably what I was trying to say, that he's not really interested in those guys unless, you know, it's absolutely necessary. Not, not by choice. Now, he's 36 going on 37, so I don't begrudge him. You've got to remember, he's been up for a long time. He's undefeated. He's had a lot of big fights. So I get it that now he's pushing 37 years old. He wants to not only just take the, the absolute biggest fight that he can get, but also cash out, and you can't blame him for that. But the thing that really gets me uh, more and more 
uh, or keen or whatever you want to call it or leaning towards it maybe happening is that Eddie Hearn has entered the conversation and he's actually said that Terence Crawford is not after or not interested in fighting anyone apart from Canelo. Now I understand that Terence Crawford isn't Eddie Hearn's fighter and also by the way Turkey Al Sheik has said this but I sort of I, I, I more lean towards Eddie Hearn's opinion more than Turkey Al Sheik because Turkey Al Sheik is look he, he's, he's a relative boxing novice a business boxing business novice we, and we I think we all understand that he's a long way geographically in Saudi Arabia uh, only enters the equation when he's planning fights and getting these events organized so I'm sure he's just repeating maybe what he's, he's heard from somebody else. Uh, maybe, maybe he's got some, some people in Inner Sanctum, whatever. But when it comes from someone like Eddie Hearn, even though Eddie's not Terence Crawford's promoter, Eddie Hearn is in the trenches every day. He knows people that knows people that knows people. You know, it goes around the boxing circles. If you're in the industry or have anything to do with it, you know that people talk, people know. And it's always a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And the fact that Eddie Hearn's sort of saying that even though he's not uh, Terence Crawford's promoter, makes me believe that there, there definitely is some truth to that. So when you've got those sort of uh, factors involved, that Canelo has no one else to fight, apart from M. Billy, who's not overly appealing, uh, and Terence Crawford being a superstar, wants that fight or nothing, I just get the feeling, call it a gut feel, that we might see this fight in May next year. I've just got a feeling. Uh, Terence likes to fight uh, once a year, it'll be obviously less than a year by then. I did also see somewhere that he, uh, he realises that only fighting once a year has been very uh, inhibitive for his career lately, in the last few years where he has only fought once a year, so he's open to fighting a little bit more regularly but he would he would he would fight more regularly in this case by coming out in May and fighting Canelo so I I don't know um, there's I think just think there's more to come in this story and yes it might, might never happen we might take Canelo at his word and that he never wants to fight Crawford because he's got nothing to gain that's great but when there's so much money at stake when there's so much interest in the fight when there's not much else for either man, well, there's probably a fair bit for for Terence Crawford, but he's not really interested uh, in those fights. I just think where there's smoke, there's fire, and don't be surprised if we do get Canelo and uh, Terence Crawford in May next year. But we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, come on, buddy. He was, buddy. He spotted another dog, so uh, just uh, on another point, we'll go across the road here. Get away from these people, from these people with the dogs. Uh, I saw that Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois, the event, has sold out. Can you believe that? 90,000 people or whatever it is, they've sold out the venue. And how good is that for for English boxing? I know it does sort of happen. Uh, you know, it does happen a fair bit uh, in in uh, the UK. But it's great to see that we're actually back in. Um, uh, in Britain, Great Britain, and we're going to have a mammoth uh, heavyweight fight. I know it's all, you know, the Saudi Arabia have pretty much hogged all the, the big heavyweight fights of recent years, but I think it's great to have Joshua and uh, Dubois in Great Britain in front of 90,000. And although it's, look, it's great for the Saudi stuff, the Riyadh season, to have all these big events, all the big fights over there, let's, let's just not sort of well, it's the elephant in the room. The, the atmosphere over there is not overly great. It, well, it's not as good as a lot of other countries. Now, it's, 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 it's probably, what do you prefer? Do you want the big fights with little to no atmosphere, or do you want, um, but, you know, lesser fights, not that Dubois and Joshua is a lesser fight, but in the UK with 90,000 screaming Brits, I would love to be there. So, I, as much as I love the Riyadh season stuff, I can't wait to see boxing back in front of 90,000 people in London. Anthony Joshua, Daniel Dubois. Uh, what are we? Only, what, about three weeks away. So it's coming around really quick. Um, so, yeah, can't wait for that one. But, uh, yeah, to see that that fight was sold out 
um, I would love to get there one day and can't wait to see that's for the fight itself look I must admit I'm not overly uh, well I'm looking forward to the event as I said but the fight itself if it's just my opinion I think that Anthony Joshua uh, would knock Daniel Dubois out I think in five or six rounds I might change my mind in the lead up to it I'm sure I'll do a bit of a preview of the fight but just at a glance now I just think Anthony Joshua is in pretty much kill mode Dubois is very open for that right hand uh, and I just think that might be his downfall but um, he can punch also Dubois so and Joshua has been known to have a bit of a, a chin on him so let's see uh, speak still on Joshua a former opponent of his Francis Ngannou is talking about a fight with uh, Deontay Wilder in the boxing ring now wow uh, it's, it's not as silly as, as uh, probably it sounds, to be honest, because I actually think uh, Ngannou would have a, not a bad chance against uh, 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 Dilly, uh, I was going to call him Dillian White there for, for a second, uh, Deontay Wilder. Um, it would be entertaining. I don't think, while, while Wilder is obviously probably a bigger puncher than Joshua, and we saw what Joshua did to Ngannou, he hasn't got the, the skill and timing of a Joshua, so maybe Ngannou would have a bit better chance. We all know that Wilder's boxing skills aren't necessarily of the standard of Muhammad Ali, so I actually think that would be a pretty good fight. It would have to obviously be boxing, and there was talk that maybe it might be some hybrid rules or or something like that, but um, go ahead, mate. A little bit uh, later out today, by the way, which is why I'm sort of running into uh, more and more people, but it's good. He, uh, Neil loves it too because he sees the same sort of dogs every day and does his thing. But I actually think that would be an entertaining fight. I, I don't mind it. Um, it'd be entertaining. I don't think there'd be any... Uh, well, it certainly wouldn't be Devin Haney and uh, Vasily Lomachenko as far as skills go, would it? It'd just be two big guys and they're throwing bombs and, and who lands first. They've both shown their chinny, but they both also have shown they can punch. Uh, if I was going to pick one, I would still probably pick Wilder very very reluctantly but who knows um, but anyway I just saw that uh, in the news cycle and one last thing uh, I haven't really ta been taking much notice of, uh, of this but it did pop up I got an email about it this morning that the Floyd Mayweather is it John Gotti the third it just says Gotti the third I'm assuming it's John Gotti the third um, uh, fighting today in uh, an exhibition now that's that's okay but the offer or the notice was for $35 to watch the exhibition. Now, I don't know, is that a thing that everyone out there pays to see? I've never actually paid to see an exhibition before. So, I'm just gonna try and turn him around here. Um, am, I, am I the only one? Uh, I did see it pop up and went, oh, okay, I'll, uh, I won't have a look at that. Geez, he's definitely windy today. Um, but then, yeah, it said, uh, buy here, or buy here. So I clicked on the uh, the little notice and went to the web page. And yes, this is the zone web page. Come here, man. And it was $35 to watch Mayweather and Gotti. So maybe, maybe I'm missing something. I've just never seen an exhibition before being charged for, even if it is Floyd Mayweather. So I haven't watched any of his other exhibitions. I probably understand maybe someone like the Logan Paul fight being uh, having to pay for because it's not necessarily um, and maybe this falls in the same boat I don't know I've never heard of this John Gotti the third I don't know who he is apart from his last name but I can understand Logan Paul Floyd maybe the massive money to be made and all the little groupies out there for for Logan Paul I'm sure would have been all over it um, he's going to try and sneak around here hang on buddy we're not going that way come here man <laughs> thinks we're going another way um, so yeah I don't know would you, will you pay thir uh, $35 to uh, to come and see that uh, to watch that fight because I'm not going to do it so anyway he's just digging his heels in here little Neil <laughs> there you go buddy come this way man so that's on today um, I'll probably have a look and see how it turned out apparently there was a bit of a kerfuffle at the last fight so I don't know, but is this somewhere where we're going where we're going to be paying for uh, exhibitions of these stars? I must admit if it was like, if it was Floyd Mayweather and say Julio Cesar Chavez, I would probably pay to watch that one. 
um, or you know you throw in some of the other greats of, of yesterday I would I would probably I would probably pay to see them and I think it's actually not a bad way to keep uh, some money in the pockets of these these superstars Chavez maybe bring back uh, Vinny Pazienza come on man digging his heels in today he doesn't want to go this way but this is our home stretch buddy so anyway let me know your thoughts will you pay for it would you like to pay for other superstars of the ring to fight in exhibitions against each other let me know but guys that is it for sunday not not the most uh, uh entertaining i know with a lot to talk about but uh it's just one of those days where uh not much in the, in the news cycle we are in almost into fight week for nikita zoo and Carl Mazudia, so we'll cover that this week as well and review it and everything else. So guys, have a great Sunday and we'll talk to you tomorrow.